Hello, your excellencies, dignitaries, and special guests. I greet you with the universal Islamic greeting. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Dr. Amina Ali, General Counsel of the Federation of International Gender and Human Rights. And today I'm going to be speaking about our points and progress in the Women's Conference part of the Indigenous People's Conference. Thank you so very much for having me. As I have been working with this population for years, it has given me great, great pleasure to understand that this work must continue. As we meet with the parameters of SDG 5, 10, and 11, we look to four points of contention in our care. The first one is to leave no one behind. And as we deal with women that are stateless, landless, those that are refugees, and those that are fleeing um, asylum in other countries, we are dealing with universal health care and the parameters of maternal care and maternal care while in crisis. So some of the outlines that you're going to hear are specific for maternal care, but are universal for the health care for women. As I mentioned, Leave No One Behind pursues equity and access to quality health care services with financial protections. This is health that is enshrined in one of the most fundamental rights of every human being, the right to dignity. Universal health care is key in reducing poverty and promoting equity and social cohesion. Governments should invest in everyone's health. This goes without saying, but the extension of this goes to geographical coverage and reaching the most marginalized and hard to reach populations that are essential to achieving positive health outcomes. A strong system for monitoring and evaluating its needs ensures accountability and participation at any fiscal level. The second part of this is accessibility. And this is resilient, responsive, and inclusive health systems that are accessible to all. Irrespective of social, economic, or legal status, health condition, or any other factor that bars women in the prior years that they were in these areas, such systems will prioritize an essential health package based on primary care principles. This is equally understood as we deal with point three, which is visibility. And this is to incorporate the health needs of vulnerable populations, in particular in fragile settings. This is the national and local health care policies and plans with increased focus on primary health care, including disease prevention, immunization services, and health promotion activities, such as the new education for post-COVID living. The next one is accountability, and this is to establish inclusive social accountability mechanisms for all parts of the healthcare system so that everyone is responsible and becomes a stakeholder and shareholder in promoting and proselytizing the solution. The last one, but certainly not least, is to regulate and legislate a strong enabling regulatory and legal environment responsive to people's needs. This means it's incorporated into the government and allows the dignity to be hold without any legal or moral ramifications that would happen because of demographic, geographic, or fiscal abilities. This is what we are doing at the Federation of Gender and Human Rights, and we are looking toward helping others in the prosperity of this for all women everywhere. Thank you so very much.